Hello, my name is Craig Gamalka. I'm the business recruiter for the University of Michigan Flint School of Management. Today's webinar is going to be on our MS in Accounting program. This is a 100% online master's degree in accounting. The University of Michigan is made up of three campuses, the Ann Arbor campus, the Dearborn campus, and our Flint campus. You'll find some differences between our accounting programs on the three campuses different structures, different costs, different admission requirements. But you will find, no matter what campus you go to, you'll still get that great, same, high-quality University of Michigan education across all three campuses. Degrees and diplomas are virtually the same. Students attending the University of Michigan, no matter what campus it is, will earn a University of Michigan degree. All three business schools are accredited by AACSB International. It's the highest accrediting body for business schools around the world. AACSB accreditation requires that all of our full-time faculty have their PhDs, so they're some of the very best faculty members out there in the world. Those faculty members must do so much research and publication, typically over a three to five year period. So what that tells our students is that our accounting faculty are staying on top of current topics and trends in their discipline, whether that's audit, tax, nonprofit. They're doing the research to show students where trends are today and where they're headed in the future so they can have those classroom discussions around some of those topics that they've been researching. I always like to throw in a slide about rankings. These are some of the rankings that um, our graduate business programs um, and all of our different programs here at the School of Management have achieved over the last couple years. These are just a few of the goals that we have set for our MSA program. So um, certainly, you know, under, understanding uh, theories and practice in key accounting areas is certainly, you know, one of the top goals. Um, being able to communicate complex and technical issues um, to different individuals that don't necessarily have an accounting background. Um, developing research skills and certainly understand the ethical codes of conduct within the accounting industry. You know, like I said, these are just a few of the goals that we have set for our students. There's many more, but I thought these are some of the key wins that you would like to see in, our, in the program. This is the structure of our MSA program. You'll notice that it's broken down into foundation, core, and elective courses. The nice thing about our accounting program is no matter what type of background you have, whether it's accounting, business, or anything in the non-business area, um, you can pursue this program without any additional courses. The foundation courses are really there to set the foundation so that you can succeed in the core part of the program. Now, for those students that come in with um, without a business background or without an accounting background, these two courses, again, will set the table so you will do well in our program. Now, for those students that do come in with an accounting background, an accounting degree from an AACSB institution, um, they can waive these two foundation courses. Or if you've taken an equivalent class within the last 10 years, um, and depending upon where you took it and the grades you received, you may be able to waive these two courses. Certainly the first one is accounting for managers. It's a combination of financial and managerial accounting from an undergrad level. The second one is corporate financial reporting. Uh, it's basically an intermediate one course from the undergrad program. So once students make their way through these two foundation courses or waive them, um, they can pursue the core part of the program. So everything in this program is really to make sure that you succeed on the CPA exam. So if you look at financial reporting, management accounting, um, your income tax class. We do have an advanced tax, which is basically corporate tax. We have systems and controls, auditing, and then your governmental and nonprofit course. So you've got two courses that are foundation. You've got seven core classes, which leaves basically three elective classes, which we give our students some flexibility in. So they're required to take at least one accounting elective, so they can choose from financial reporting, statement analysis, or, or forensic accounting. And then they've got the option of two other elective courses. Those can either be additional accounting electives or they can take some MBA electives. Um, totally up to each individual student how they want to kind of craft their schedule, but we give students the flexibility to choose some accounting or um, some of the MBA electives that we do offer. The program length can range anywhere between 30 to 36 credit hours. 
12, um, 10 to 12 courses. And again, that variance has to do with waiving or not waiving those two foundation courses. We do offer a dual program with our MBA. So um, very similar setup. We do have foundation courses and then our core classes. So um, additional foundation courses, you'll notice our economics or behavior and quantitative analysis. Um, same rules apply for the MBA program in terms of waivers. If you've taken an equivalent class within the last 10 years, we look at the grades and we look at where you took it, um, you'll be able to waive some of those courses. And then we've got our core classes. So certainly you have your accounting courses, which we talked about. Then we go into finance. Global Dimensions is our international business course. Information Systems is e-commerce. Marketing, uh, we have a course called Non-Market Strategy, which is Law, Ethics, and Policy. Uh, negotiations, strategic management, and then operations and supply chain management. So when you do the dual program, the program ranges anywhere between 45 to 60 credits, anywhere between 15 to 20 courses. Now, obviously, if you complete the accounting program first, you'll be able to double count all of those accounting courses that you've taken, which leaves you only the MBA courses left to pursue. So you're able to count those accounting courses that you've taken already, towards the MBA program, really saving time and money um, by picking up a second master's degree and reducing the time and cost it needs to pursue that second degree. Everything that you've done in the MSA program will help you prepare for the CPA exam. Requirements for the test include a bachelor's degree, three semester hours of auditing, 21 hours of accounting, including financial and accounting theory, cost, system controls, taxation, and then your government and nonprofit course. You'll also need 24 hours of a general business subjects. For those students that have graduated with an undergrad degree in accounting or business, you'll have met these requirements. For those students that have come in from a different dis discipline in their undergrad program, you should consider pursuing the dual MBA and accounting degree. The dual degree will give you those general business subjects and credit hours that you'll need to meet this particular requirement. The CPA license includes the exam, which we just talked about, approximately one year of public accounting experience, and then the education requirements, which you can get through the MSA degree. When looking at our accounting program, we have a bunch of different types of courses that we offer. So online, uh, NetPlus, which is our hybrid, and then we do um, some on-campus and evening courses. Most of our students will pursue one of the two types of schedules. So um, they'll either take two classes fall, two classes winter, one spring, one summer, and then do that over again the second year. Um, and that's a part-time schedule. Or if students want to pursue it full-time, they can take three courses in the fall, three courses in the winter, two spring, two summer, back to three fall again, and then they've completed the program. Program length anywhere between 16 to 24 months and they do have five years to complete the MSA degree. The semesters follow the university's um, traditional schedule, so fall and winters are 15 weeks long, and then spring and summer are condensed, so they're short seven-week semesters. When we look at our online formats, um, the MSA degree can be completed 100% online, so that means no campus visits, uh, we do offer our ACC 521 course, Accounting for Managers, completely online in the spring semester. And then we do um, all of our coursework within Blackboard, which is our online learning platform. If students are interested in pursuing any of our hybrid courses, we call them NetPlus, um, it's 60% online uh, and then 40% on campus. Those are campus sessions twice per semester. Um, we do offer some classes in the MSA program in that hybrid format. We also offer MBA courses in that hybrid format as well, too. So when you look at that hybrid structure, I mentioned you have to come to campus twice each semester. So that's a Friday, Saturday weekend session. And if you take two courses, you're pretty much on campus all day Friday, all day Saturday. If you take one course during a semester, uh, the semester, or excuse me, the sessions meet either in the morning on Friday, Saturday, or in the afternoon on Friday, Saturday. So you'll be a half day um, if you take one class. Now, when you do take one of the hybrid NetPlus classes, 
the campus sessions are required. You cannot miss them. They're built into the program. So uh, we have a calendar that goes out for the next two years. So you can see what, exactly when those campus sessions are. Um, and then you must be here for them on campus. We also have a course rotation schedule where you can see all of our courses, whether it be MBA courses or accounting courses, um, the formats that we offer them in, and then certainly what uh, semester that they're offered in. So you can find that on our website uh, under the accounting program called the course rotation schedule. Now, when we look at our online coursework for the, uh, the MSA, which is completely online, again, we use Blackboard as our learning platform. So you'll find all your class assignments and syllabi posted all the Blackboard on the first day. Uh, the different deadlines for tests, assignments, they'll all be posted there as well, too. Blackboard has some uh, nice features in terms of meeting rooms. So if you have uh, group assignments, you can upload papers, um, have chats within the meeting rooms. All of your tests in the accounting program will be uh, all online. They'll be all timed tests. So open book, open note, but uh, you have the ability to um, carve out a couple of hours out of your day, or maybe it's 45 minutes, whatever the professors deem appropriate for your test uh, to certainly take that. The nice thing about our professors is they typically give you anywhere between a Friday to Sunday or even a Monday to Sunday to uh, take that test. So it's usually enough time for our students to kind of make sure that they can get a little time out of their uh, busy weeks to make sure that they can get those tests in. Other coursework that you'll be doing in the program, certainly some independent readings, whether that's uh, textbook material, supplemental materials that they provide, uh, different case studies, uh, certainly group work will be a part of the program. I would say about half of the courses in our MSA program have some type of group work associated with them and then different homework sets. So, um, you know, whatever the professors deem appropriate for homework, uh, you'll certainly have that in the program as well too. Plus some other um, assignments that professors will provide throughout the whole program. So these are just some of the different types of coursework that you'll be doing, but I'm sure they'll be mixing some things up for you guys in the program. Time commitment in our program. So uh, if you take one course in our program, you could probably expect to put in about six to nine hours of work per week outside the classroom. So if you have a hybrid class, you know, would be coming to class. Um, if you have the completely online MSA program, you know, probably six to nine hours. When you look at two classes, probably 15 to 18 hours of work each week for the class. So that's what you'd be looking at for the accounting program each semester. When we look at tuition in the MSA program, in-state tuition, $777 per credit, out-of-state tuition, $969, and then the different types of fees. So um, we have an online course fee of $46 per credit hour. Should you take any of the hybrid courses, those have additional fees associated with them. But when we look at the overall program cost, um, the program ranges anywhere from 25 to 31 for in-state tuition and then 31 to 37 for out-of-state tuition. And then certainly you can see the dual program as well too. So if you're interested in pursuing the dual program, you can kind of see the, uh, the approximate cost of earning two master's degrees with us. Scholarships, we've got a few scholarships that we award through the School of Management. Uh, the first is our MSA scholarship. Uh, it's a competitive scholarship, a $3,000 award. Um, to be eligible for it, you need to have a 3.0 GPA and submit a GMAT score of 500 or better. Or if you end up waiving our GMAT requirement, it's a 3.5 GPA or better. We also offer a GMAT scholarship. It's a $2,500 award. It's non-competitive, so if you earn a score of 600 or better on the GMAT, we will automatically award you a $2,500 scholarship um, when you enter the program, and that's a one-time scholarship. The university also has numerous scholarships um, that are competitive. You apply for them every year, um, and typically the deadlines are going to be mid-February for existing students, um, and if you're a new student, typically June 1 will be that deadline. You must be enrolled at least half-time, which is six credits or two classes, to be eligible for any of our scholarships. So that's why most of our students will pursue two classes during the fall and winter semesters. Admission deadlines, uh, we accept students in every semester, so fall, winter, spring, and summer. So please uh, apply for the semester um, that fits you best. We have a very straightforward MSA application. You can find the online application at our graduate um, programs website. There's a $55 fee that goes along with that application. 
If you attend one of our on-campus events, you may be able to get a fee waiver for that application. Uh, we do have official transcripts that are required. So uh, even if you went to several schools, only took one or two classes there, we still need all of those transcripts. We do require a uh, updated resume, including all of your education and work experience. We have a one page statement of purpose, which is your essay question. And what we'd like to know is why do you want the MSA degree and how's that gonna help your career? This is also um, your open forum. Should you have anything that might affect our admission decision, um, feel free to put it in that uh, essay. We do require two letters of recommendation. Um, you can have your recommenders write a formal letter and submit it to our graduate office, or you can use the online form within the application. All we ask for are two email addresses for your recommenders. You can input those, and once you actually submit the application, so you'll pay your $55 and submit the application, the next day our graduate office will send out an email link to your recommenders. They click on the link. There's six questions that they have to answer about you, and then they submit those. So we try to keep it easy for you and easy for them. We do require the GMAT of the GRE, and we do have waivers available, which I'll go on in my next slide to talk about. For our international students, we do require English proficiency. The application is very flexible, so you don't have to have everything submitted all at one time. You can fill out the application, pay your $55. Uh, if you'd like to put in your recommenders, you can submit that and make sure they get those out right away. You can send in your statement at a later date. Your resume can come in uh, sometime at a later date. Transcripts can come in one by one. Once we receive a completed application, so all the pieces have been received, then we'll re we will review your application for admission. The application is good for an entire year, so um, you can submit it piece by piece over an entire year if you want to. So we always encourage students to apply a little bit early for the semester that they're interested in. I did mention that we do have a GMAT waiver policy. So we have five criteria that we look for to waive the GMAT. So if you have a graduate degree, so a master's, doctorate, or some type of professional degree from an AACSB or ABET institution, ABET being in, uh, an engineering accreditation, we will waive the GMAT for you. If you have five years of professional work experience or military experience, um, we'll look to waive the GMAT for you. To apply for this particular one, all you have to do is email me your uh, resume. Uh, make sure it's very detailed in terms of your work experience, any type of promotions, advancements that you had in your career. Um, and I will submit that to a committee who will review those uh, on a monthly basis. And you'll see my contact information at the end of this presentation. If you graduated from a University of Michigan campus with a 3.2 GPA as an undergrad or higher, we will waive the GMAT. I just need to review transcripts for that. Uh, you can submit any type of certifications like a, a PMP or a, a CFA. Um, our committee will, will review those as well, too. Or if you've been admitted to one of our doctorate programs that we've got uh, dual MBA programs with, we will waive the GMAT. So uh, doctorate of nursing, doctorate of physical therapy, or occupational theory, therapy doctorate, we will automatically waive the GMAT for you. And certainly any type of questions that you have about uh, GMAT waiver, you know, please feel free to contact me and I will certainly go over those questions with you. So if you don't meet any of those criteria, you will have to take the GMAT or the GRE. We do accept both tests um, as part of the application process. Just a little bit of information um, for you about the GMAT. So um, four sections on the GMAT. We do have an essay question. Um, there's integrative reasoning. It's scored, um, well, let's go back to the essay. The scoring for the essay is zero to six. The scoring for the integrative reasoning is zero to eight. And then you've got your quantitative and verbal sections, um, which make up the bulk of your score. The test range is from 200 to 800, with two thirds of people that take the GMAT scoring between 400 and 600. This uh, incoming fall class that we had, their average GMAT was a 560. That includes the MBA and the accounting students. And our minimum score to be considered for the program is going to be 450. And don't forget about the GMAT scholarship, which is a score of 600 or better. Uh, we will award you a $2,500 scholarship automatically. Uh, GRE is very similar. They do have an analytical writing section, which is scored 0 to 6 as well, too. Um, but they do have two essay questions. Their scoring range is a little bit different. It's 130 to 170. 
and our average score for our incoming fall class this year was a verbal of 155 and a quantitative of 154. Uh, the minimum score to be considered is going to be a verbal of 146 and a quantitative of 146, and that equates to a GMAT score of 450. If you guys have any questions on GMAT waivers or certainly the test itself, here's my contact information, um, email or phone. Again, you can reach out to me anytime with any questions on the MSA program. Again, I appreciate you taking some time uh, to view this webinar today, and uh, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Thank you very much.